Yes. In times like these everyone lacks hope, purpose and salvation. As a result, humanity is subject to its sinful nature, chasing depravity and abolishing all sense of decency, believing that this might fill the emptiness they have in their lives. Whether it may be adultery, seeking fame on social media, or striving for riches. All these bring no fulfillment and leave one with a bitter aftertaste. However, every human has hope, purpose and a salvation, and that in only Jesus Christ. He sacrificed himself for our sins so that we may have the salvation which is eternal life in heaven. But not only this. In him you will find hope for the future. Because we Christians know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you accept these facts, you are equipped to lead a purposeful lifestyle in Christ. May Jesus Christ bless you in your walk. It is part three and the final part of chapter 13 as far as the book of Revelation is concerned. So today we'll be finding out who is the eighth head and that eighth head is also of the seven. So they're all part of the seven. Last week we spoke about the false prophet. The false prophet was the one who came out of the land and he was like a lamb with two horns but spoke blasphemy and we said the false prophet um, there was four things that he needed to do one was the purpose of the false prophet the timing of the false prophet the powers of the false prophet and then the identity of the false prophet we spoke about the first three and the last one is the identity which is today now the purpose of the false prophet we find it in Revelation 13 uh, verse 12 and he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wounds was healed so his purpose to exercise all the authority all the authority of the first beast which came out of the sea that had seven heads and ten horns now the timing we said it's not on the screen the timing we said the false prophet will appear uh, at the time of the slaining of the seventh head and the healing of the wound and the seventh head we said it was great britain so at the slaining of the seventh head great britain great britain fell at the end of world war ii in 1945 so the end of World War II in 1945 was the end of the British Empire. The head, the seventh head was slain. But the Holy Bible says that wound was healed later on. So between the slaining and the healing, the timing of the false prophet surfaces into our time and age. Now, the powers of the false prophet he was able to do three powers number one and we find this in again revelation 13 and um, verse 13 he performs great signs he brings fire from heaven in the presence of men that's the number one brings fire from heaven number two he forces people on earth to make an image of the first beast the seven heads and the ten horns that came out of the sea. He forces people on earth to make an image of the first beast and he breathes into this image where it becomes alive. And we spoke about this breath, Noma, which comes from the Greek word which is to do with the soul or the spirit of a human, not animation, real spirit, where this image becomes alive like a human being. That was the second power. And he makes all the people on the earth whose names are writ not written in the book of life to worship this image which he breathed into and made it alive. And number three, he will put a mark either on the, on the hand or the forehead where no one can buy and sell. And this mark is a number of a man and it is 666. We spoke in depth last week yes so now we said 
fire from heaven, nuclear warheads, this is military power. So the, the actual job of the false prophet is to come up with military power that it is like fire coming from heaven. And here he is talking about nuclear war, World War III. Nuclear warheads, World War III. This is fire coming down from heaven. The image which he caused the people to make of the first beast, and then he breathed into it, the breath of like became alive, and forced everyone to worship it, those whose names are not written in the book of life. That image that became alive is technology, TV, internet, Facebook, TikTok, Wikwok, Nook Nook, the whole lot. The whole lot. Technology. And hasn't he made people to worship technology? My goodness, you look nowadays at technology, and we spoke about this, I don't want to repeat what we said, but people are worshiping that Facebook and that Instagram and that TikTok and that YouTube. They are worshiping technology, and Satan has brought into these channels things that are so evil, evil, filth. Filth. And the last one, the mark, 666, either on the hand or the forehead, this is banking system. If you have military power, if you have technology, and if you have banking system, you can control the world. All of them together. A superpower nowadays is known to have the most powerful military, the most powerful technology, and the most powerful banking system. If that superpower has the three together, they can enslave everyone on the face of this earth. And this is what is happening exactly in our time and age. <laughs> oh my goodness. The church is still asleep. They don't like me talking. Church leaders don't like me talking, by the way. I've been already attacked. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota. I got nothing to lose, baby. I got nothing to lose, my dear friend, so find someone else. I'm a Middle Eastern guy. I am very stubborn. <laughs> so you're, you're fighting against the wrong person. All right, here we go. So now, so we spoke about the purpose, the timing, the powers of the false prophet, and what happened? Yes, last time also we touched base on East India Company, if you recall this. So the British people, or the British government, there are some wonderful British people, and my prayers and my love for every British resident uh, of, 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 of England or Great Britain or whatever you want to call it. I love the British people, but I'm talking about governmental system. We said the empire is a pagan, a pagan sort of uh, government without the rule of God. It's a government uh, system without the rule of God. So they came up with this idea of establishing East India Company, um, which was established by British Empire. The reason for that was, through the East India Company, the British established a warfare to rule the world. So this British um, uh, East India Company, it was to do with spice trades with India. That was the outside banner. We are trading spices between us and India, but in between those spices, warfares. Why? Because they wanted to create wars in order to reduce the world's population and have control over humanity. Now, the East India Company was dissolved by Queen Victoria in 1874. So you could see it's going back a couple of hundred years. So Queen Victoria at the time realized they are doing some sneaky work behind the spices. Very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
right? Let's sell some weapons. Very spicy. So Queen Victoria, in turn, she dissolved East India Company in 1874 precisely. Did they give up? No. Thus, they changed its name to East India House instead of Company. And what they did, the name was changed to Chatham House afterward. So from East India Company to East India House to Chatham House and stopped creating warfare but continued the same mentality to control the world. They started seeking alternate ways to control the world since the queen went against them and stopped that a trade of weapons they said okay no more warfares let us come up with other brilliant ideas on how to control the world Chatham House some of the members let me call out some of the names they may sound familiar to some of you Chatham House some of the members Woodrow Wilson from 18, he was born in 1856, died in 1924. Charles Darwin, oh ho, hello, anybody home? You see, these things they don't teach you at school. Charles Darwin, 1809, 1882. Another member, Karl Marx. Anybody? Who's Karl Marx? The founder of communism. Charles Darwin, evolution. Anybody home? These were members of Chatham House. Who is Chatham House? East India House. Who is East India House? East India Company that came up with the warfare to control the world. These people that I'm calling their names out were atheists to the core. Atheists to the core. Hated Jesus Christ because he is the only true God. They don't give one penny about other religions. With all love and respect to all the other religions, they don't give one penny. Because the one who is behind the false prophet is Satan. Satan hates Jesus, our Lord. That's why you invoke the name Jesus, all hell breaks loose. And when people want to attack any any uh, religion out there, they always attack the Lord Jesus. Like that it did. Thomas Malthus. Thomas Malthus, my beloved, 1766-1834 he died. Thomas Malthus, his idea at his time was to bring the world's population to 500 million people only. That was his initiative. So this little boy called Bill Gates, he gets the idea of Thomas Malthus back in, in the 18th century. The world's population must be reduced because he said it has to be reduced to 500 million. Uh, Bill Gates says around 1 billion. Man, just get a life, you little puppet. Jesus Christ always rules and reigns. No one does anything without his permission. So be gone, little kids playing in the street. And another one, interesting, very interesting figure, Ce uh, Cecil Rhodes, 1853 to 1902. Let's talk about Cecil Rhodes now, please, please. It's very interesting, a bit of a history here. Cecil Rhodes. Has anyone heard of the round table? Can you put your hands up if you have heard of the round table? Oh, not bad. Pretty good. Excellent. The Round Table is a secret society that was started around the turn of the 20th century by Freemason and Rothschild agent Lord Alfred Milner, who was entrusted the mission by Cecil Rhodes. Cecil Rhodes entrusted them with this mission to establish the Round Table, which is a secret society. Cecil Rhodes continues, in his will, Rhodes devoted his entire fortune to the creation of the round table groups. He said in the will to and for the establishment, promotion and development of a secret society, the true aim and object whereof shall be for the extension of British rule throughout the world. 
his whole intention for Great Britain to rule the world. And he would do anything and everything to make sure that comes into wishing. Continues. Rhodes made his third will, leaving everything to Rothschild, his entire fortune, his financier in the mining enterprises. So Rhodes leaves all his fortune to the Rothschild. The organization was run for Rothschild by Milner. The round table worked behind the scenes at the highest levels of British government, influencing foreign policy and England's involvement and conduct of World War I. So who's behind the wars? Satan. Yes? Nothing to do, oh, this guy stole my land and this guy stole my uh, internet idea, so I'm going to go and bash him up. No, it's about controlling the entire human race. Satan's idea, which he failed to establish in heaven, he said, I will succeed in establishing this idea of one government system that will enslave everyone and subject everyone to its system. This idea Satan brought from heaven to establish on earth. We are encountering the very, very enforcing of it at its beginning stage. The round table. Now, I'm cutting it very short. It's an extremely long history. The first two groups created by the round table, look, so, look, so the round table created these two groups. These two groups are still in existence. One in, in England, the other in America. <laughs> so the, the first two groups created by the round table secret society were the British Royal Institute for International Affairs, R double IA in 1920 and the American Council on Foreign Relations CFR in 1921. So the R double IA and the CFR, both of them were created by the Round Table. The Round Table had 12 members, all 12 members, atheists to the core, doing one thing to wipe Christianity. That's why. Christ is out of the way, we can do whatever we want. Now I'll come to the church role at the end. I have to confess one thing. Today I was very angry. In a sad way. In a sad way. But we need to pray. We need to pray. The CFR, Council on Foreign Relations. Later the plan was changed to create an um, Austin, uh, Osti, ostensible uh, autonomy. It had to be made to appear that the CFR, which is Council on Foreign Relations, and the RIIA, British Royal Institute for International Affairs, were independent bodies. They wanted to to, sh to reflect this picture, they are totally independent. No, both of them were created by the round table. Lest the American public become aware of the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, was in fact a subsidiary of the round table group and react in patriotic fury. This is the group which designed the United Nations. The CFR slash RIIA method of operation is simple. They control public opinion. It has influence and power in key decision-making positions at the highest levels of government to apply pressure from above and also announces and uses individuals and groups to bring pressure from below. So pressure from above and pressure from below and they have influence on who's going to be the president, who's going to be the prime minister and so on. They choose. So all these nonsense votings, they've been lying to the world and saying, we are democratic countries and you can cast your vote so freely, is a lie. 
You vote, they play with your votes afterwards. Someone sitting in the back room going with a computer like a, a video game. It's a sick, sick, sick world. Now my dear daughter and my dear son, do you want to chase this sick world? Why are you having fun in a sick world? Where is your Lord? Come back to Christ. Stop going clubbing. That's sick. Stop dressing up semi-naked, my daughter. That is sick. Stop changing your face and your body. That is sick. This is evil. This is the intention of Satan. He has made, the false prophet made an image of the first beast and he breathed into it to bring it alive and forces people on earth to worship this image. This image has been pumped into our heads through technology. How many ads they show you about changing your looks? How much advertisement is there being pumped into the world saying, if you want to do this, we can do it for you. If you want to be whatever, we can change you from black to white, from yellow to red to whatever color you want. Evil. 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 I wish I had more time. One world government. Woodrow Wilson, do you, do you remember this name? This is one of the round table member. Who is Woodrow Wilson? The 28th US president. Wow. He was a member in the round table. <laughs> what are the round table? The false prophet is behind it. He was a president. He was a president of United States, the 28th president, traveled around the world calling nations to be united to prevent future wars. Well, well, he failed because World War II started in 1939. So he failed to bring all the nations together. But he tried. He was a member of the round table. Huh? See, what was the idea behind that? To make Great British rule the entire world. Bring it all under one system but he failed world war ii started now let's go to the federal reserve system you know what i said you need to have military power you need to have technology and you need to have a, a strong banking system now let's look at the biggest joke of what they call nowadays or they've been calling it for for a very long time as a federal reserve bank there is no such thing it's a nonsense in 1907 the U.S. economy was in a great financial crisis. In November 1910, six men, Nelson Aldrich, A. Pyatt Andrew, Henry Davison, Arthur Shelton, Frank Van Vanderlip, and Paul Warburg. Now, Paul Warburg was a Rothschild's agent. Later became second vice chairman of the Federal Reserve from 1916 to 1918. He was the, the what? The, the vice chairman of the entire Federal Reserve Bank of America, an agent of Rothschild. Met at the Jekyll Island Club. Has anyone heard of Jekyll Island Treaty? Yes? At the Jekyll Island Club off the coast of Georgia to write a plan to reform the nation's banking system. Now listen, listen to this, amazing. The meeting and its purpose were closely guarded secrets. The par and participant did not admit that the meeting occurred until the 1930s. This took place in 1913. In Jekyll Island, it took place in 1913. It they did not confess of this secret meeting until the 1930s, 20 odd years later. But the plan written on Jekyll Island laid a foundation for what would be eventually 
be the Federal Reserve System. On the 23rd of December 1913, President Woodrow Wilson passed the Federal Reserve Act. Maybe you missed it. The date, 23rd of December. What does that tell you? What is 23rd of December clause 2? What happens on uh, Christmas time? Everyone goes? Congress was on holidays. Did you know this act that was passed by President Wilson, Woodrow Wilson, did you know he passed it based on three people getting together two days before Christmas where everyone from the Congress was on holidays. Three people signed it, one of them the agent of Rothschild, Warburg, and Woodrow Wilson being a member of the round table, of course, what will he do? He will endorse it. He passed the act and it became an act. It wasn't an act. Actually, it was an act as in acting, <laughs> a theatrical act. I think I'll get into trouble now. <laughs> The final bill closely resembled those of the Aldrich Plan. Federal Reserve Act allowed international bankers, look at this. This Federal Reserve Act, which President Woodrow Wilson passed and endorsed, it allowed international bankers to control a nation's economy, which played a key role in lending money to finance the world wars. International bankers took over the Federal Reserve Banks of almost every country. To do what with these banking system? To create war and then fund those countries with money and then that country becomes in debt so far and so deep then they'll come and say, you can't pay it? That's okay, my darling. We will write off this, but we are free to do whatever we want to do in your country. So who is the Federal Reserve Bank? Freemason. This chairman, the other day he was brought to investigation in front of a board. Can they stop acting? Because not everyone is blind. You guys in parliament, wherever you are, not everyone is blind. So please stop, stop deceiving and stop treating people this way. Have some respect for yourselves. There is no Federal Reserve Bank. There is nonsense of investigation. You did not have to raise interest rates. You did not have to do all these nonsense. You know very well it's a plan. You see, they, they reduced the interest rate to less than 2%. Wow, unheard of. The Federal Reserve interest rate was almost zero. It was 0.1%. We've never seen this in Australia for a very long time. So what, what happened? Everybody went by and started buying house properties. It's a, it's a very low rate. Let's take advantage of it. So everybody went, whatever cash they had, they put it as a deposit or those who borrowed from the bank to the maximum and the banks all of a sudden became so friendly and so easy to lend. We'll lend you 95, 97, 98, 100% if you want. No problems, but we'll get you two years later. So everybody invested. And after that, they said, okay, millions of people bought second, third, and the first house. And now it is really hot. So let's start raising the rate, saying inflation is high. Get a life, you liars. So they started increasing the rate and now he comes and he says, you know what, we have a group of people who are on fixed rate about to expire. Those ones will feel the pinch, but we've been told by the major banks who are all liars, we've been told by the major banks that this percentage of people who are on fixed rate who will struggle once their fixed rates are expired, it's a very minute percentage compared to the overall borrowers.
Federal Reserve Bank is not federal, is not a reserve bank, is not owned by no government. It's Freemason owned, including America, the number one. That's, that, that happened in America. They took over and the Federal Reserve System in America. They took it over. The bankers had been waiting since 1887 for the United States to enact, enact a central bank plan so that they could finance a European war among the nations whom they had already bankrupted with armament, military weapons and equipment and defense programs. The most demanding function of the central bank mechanism is war finance. You want to destroy a country, create a war and lend them money because they need money to keep the war happening and then control that country. Now, we come back to the false prophet. We have so far covered the following. The purpose of the false prophet to exercise all the authority of the first beast that came out of the sea. The timing between the slaying of the seventh head, British Empire, and the healing of that wood. That's the timing. The powers, he brings fire from heaven, nuclear warheads. World War III will take place in the 21st century. I'm sorry to say this, but this is the fact of our time and age. World War III will take place in the 21st century, whether they like it, those secret societies or not, because the Lord will teach them a lesson of their entire time. Identity of the false prophet. I'll, I'll take you to Daniel chapter 3, verse 3. Let's, let's look what Daniel is saying in 3, 3. Then I lifted my eyes and saw, and there standing beside the river was a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, um, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. Let's go to Daniel 3, 19 to 20. And he said, Look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. Now, if you're not aware of what uh, Daniel 3, 19 is saying, this is the archangel Gabriel. The archangel Gabriel is revealing to Daniel what will happen in the latter times. Latter times, 21st century. The book of Daniel is written for our time, not his time. The book of Daniel is written for our time, the 21st century, not his time. So the archangel Gabriel is saying, is talking here. And he said, meaning the archangel Gabriel, and he said to Daniel, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. So an end is coming. The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Medai and Persia. So he revealed, the archangel Gabriel revealed to Daniel the prophet that that ram which you saw with two horns, those horns are the kings of Medai and Persia. Remember the beast of Revelation 13.1 that came out of the sea had seven heads and ten horns. The horns refer to kings. Now, the false prophet, which I want to bring your attention more so, the false prophet came out of the land he was like a lamb. Now what Daniel saw in 3.3, 3, he saw a ram with two horns. John the Beloved saw a lamb. Talking about a sheep here, right? Same thing. He saw a lamb with two horns. Now if the two horns in Daniel um, 3.19 to 20 are the kings of Persia and Medai, therefore the horns which John the Beloved saw which is the false prophet, they are also kings. Now kings rule over an empire. Cyrus the king, Persia and Medai. Wherever there is kings, there is empires. So that ram which Daniel saw which, with two horns, one is the king of Persia, uh, 
Persian Empire, and the other one is the king of Medai, the Medai Empire. So these two horns represent empires. So if the horn in Daniel represents an empire, guess what? Wherever you go in the Bible, the horn will represent an empire. Are you with me? See, the Holy Bible is the Word of God. When God talks, His Word is one. He's not going to say one thing here and a totally different thing here. If the horn in Daniel represents an empire, then the horn in John 13 of Revelation represents an empire. Yes? See, you need to look at the whole Bible to understand what it's talking about. Now, let's come to Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Exactly what Daniel saw, John the Beloved in the end of times saw as well, a lamb with two horns. Therefore, if Daniel chapter 3 talked about the two horns which represents empires or nations, so is in Revelation 13. So let's recap, having spoken about so far. So we come to 13.12, Revelation 13.12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast. So this false prophet that came out of the land, that is like a lamb and has two horns, this one exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now we go to Revelation 17, 9 to 10. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, and the other has not come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. We said this previously. So in summary, what are the five fallen? We said the Egyptian Empire, followed by the Assyrian Empire, followed by the Babylonian Empire, followed by the Medo-Persian Empire, and the Greek empires. So when John was writing the book of Revelation, at his time, these five heads, from the seven heads of that beast that came out of the sea, these five heads have already fallen when John was writing the book of Revelation. They were not at his time. He says, but one is, one was still present, ruling at the time of John the Beloved. Who was that one? Roman Empire, which is the sixth head of the beast that came out of the sea in Revelation 13.1. And one hasn't come yet. The one that hasn't come yet, we said the seventh one was British Empire, which ruled from the time of the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 till the end of World War II in 1945. For 130 years, Great Britain ruled the world, which is the seventh head of the beast, and got wounded. They fell at the end of World War II. Now, who are the two horns in Daniel 3.3? Medai and Persia. The two horns in Revelation 13.11 are Britain and the United States. The two superpowers of the end times is Great Britain and United States. So, Daniel, again, I'll just re re recap on this. Daniel, in chapter 3, verse 3, he saw this ram with two horns. So then, in Daniel 3, 19 to 20, the archangel Gabriel is explaining who these two horns are. He says the two horns, one is Medai, the other, the one is Persian and the other one is Medai. So the two horns you saw, Daniel, in, in chapter 3, are the two empires, Persia and Medai. Now, if those two horns are two empires, well, Daniel in chapter 13 sees the false prophet coming out of the land like a lamb with two horns. 
So the two horns in Daniel are empires. Therefore, the two horns in John 13 are also empires. Who are the empires in the end of times? It is Great Britain and the United States. Now, why ram or lamb in Revelation 13? Because a lamb, my beloved, represents who? Excuse me? Come on, don't be afraid. It represents the Lord Jesus. What did John the, beloved, John the Baptist, what did John the Baptist say about the Lord Jesus? Here is the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. So who is the true Lamb? Christ. Where Christianity comes from. So when I ask you a question, what are you? You say, I am a Christian Catholic. Don't say I'm a Catholic period like that. No, you are a Christian Catholic. You are a Christian Orthodox. You're not Orthodox. You're not Catholic. You have to be Christian in order to be then whatever you want to be. If Christ is not the head or the crown of your head, then what kind of a Christian are you? So a lamb represents Christ, Christianity. My question to everyone, how does the world perceive Britain, British Empire and United, uh, Britain and the United States? How do they perceive them? As Christian nations, isn't it? You talk about America, they said it's a Christian nation. You talk about Great Britain, they say it's a Christian nation. But this lamb, who had the two horns, which is one, Great Britain, the other one, United States, they externally, they look Christians, but this false prophet spoke blasphemy. So inwardly, they do the work of Satan. Who, are, who established the round table? Great Britain. <laughs> The round table, in turn, established the RIIA, the Royal Institute for International Affairs, and the CFR, the, um, what is the CFR? Council for Foreign Relations. Thank you. Council for Foreign Relations. These two, the CFR and the RIIA, both of them influence who's going to be in government influence the banking system, influence wars, influence everything. <laughs> British people in general have a very big head, they're very smart. But unfortunately, most of the time they use it for evil things, not good things. So to the world, United States and Britain or England, both of them are perceived as Christian nations. But deep down behind the scenes, they speak blasphemy. Now let's go further. Um, the first horn of Revelation 13:11, Great Britain ended wounded at the end of World War II in 1945. The second horn of Revelation 13:11 is the United States. Now, the false prophet is represented as a lamb in Revelation 13. Lamb also in the Bible is referred to the Lord Jesus Christ. Both Britain and the United States are considered Christian countries. Therefore, the two horns of the lamb are Britain and the U.S. British Empire collapsed and the U.S. became the new superpower. Who made the United States? Great Britain. <laughs> Who made the United States? Great Britain. So the first horn is Great Britain. The second one is the United States. When Great Britain fell at the end of World War II, 1945, they said to the United States, come on board. You are the next superpower. But we are the brain behind the superpower. Why do you think Brexit took place? And I don't have the time. I don't have the time. But I'll say this. I'll say this. Why do you think 
England wanted so badly to exit from the EU, European nations. Why? Because you have on the other side two superpowers, Russia and China. Now, Russia is the brain behind China. Sorry, with all love and respect, don't get me wrong. But the brain behind China power is Russia. Chinese are good at taking something, replicating it, and making it better than the original. But they have to have something. They can't just create something. Russians can. So, what did Russia do? Said to China, you go and focus on building your infrastructure. Focus on building a superpower economy. Because when you have a strong economy, you can, you can rule. So they said to China, focus on your economy. We will focus on our military. And we'll provide you with all our military technology. But you focus on economy. So you back me up financially, I back you up militarily. On the other hand, United States focused the majority of its economy on building their military powers. Economically, not as strong as China. China's economy surpassed United States economy by 100 miles. And it's too late to stop the Chinese. Trump said it. He said, the previous presidents to me were all traitors. They sold their country to China. Why? Because they saw China growing so rapidly and so powerfully economically, and they did nothing. In fact, they supported China to be strong. So he said, now I can't stop it. He admitted, but I can influence China to come to the table and we negotiate on who's gonna rule what and what and where by using US military power. We are superior to China. So the only threat I can do is to say, I've got muscles, China. You move, I can wipe you from the face of this earth. But in this, everybody loses because it's World War III, nuclear. So America came back to Britain, they said, Chinese succeeded in building a strong and powerful economy because they had Russia focusing on military. So they focused their money on building the economy. Me, America, I'm by myself. You see, even the allies of America, Europe are normally allies of America, but the only country that loves America and will never, ever betray America is Great Britain. Because they made America. They were together from day one. So the only country out of the EU that loves America and will never walk away from America is Great Britain. America said to Britain, come out of the EU, be alone, independent, so that way you focus on the military power, I focus on making our economy strong, so we can compete with China. That's why they Brexited, to be with America behind the scenes, because they are the brains. Who created uh, East India Company? Britain. What for, for what? Warfare. <laughs> they got the brains. Summary of the two empires. East India Company, that's what it started. And became East India House. After that became Chatham House. Then it became the Round Table. The Round Table, Karl Marx, the founder of communism, uh, Charles Darwin, the founder of evolution. They are teaching evolution at high school levels, at university levels, both in the secular world and the Christian schools. Now, shame on such Christian schools. 
to take an atheist, a member of the round table, Charles Darwin, and accept his nonsense, the biggest lie ever invented by Charles Darwin was evolution, and teach it for Christian children. Shame on you, church leaders. And you can all get going. And if you want to hate me more, then please do. It's not about an it going against the Lord. It's much bigger than an it. It's a big fat it. The round table created the Royal Institute of International Affairs and the Council for Foreign Relations. They are brilliant at coming up with titles. Evil, poisonous. So in return, this RIIA and the CFR created the United Nation. What is the false prophet? A Gentile empire without the rule of God. The Lamb represents Christianity. Christ is the Lamb of God. Had two horns. One Christian nation, Britain. The other one, United States. But this Lamb spoke blasphemy, spoke evil, because the one who is behind the false prophet and the beast that came out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns is the red dragon in Revelation 12. And who is the red dragon? Satan. Satan, Satan fed you poison, my daughter, my son, fed you poison, lied, bluffed you with technology. Let's look at, uh, uh, what are the singers, Adele, Medel. Hollywood, Illuminati's, who is Illuminati? Satan worshippers, they focused on entertainment. I don't have the time. One day I'll talk. Entertainment is the way to infiltrate the back door of your imagination, meaning you have no control once you expose yourself to it. You have no control over it. It comes from the back way of the imagination and the imagination controls the subconscious mind not the conscience the subconscious the subconscious in an other words entertainment is hypnosis it's hypnotic you get addicted to watching these celebrities you get addicted to the drum beat you get addicted to the style to the music to the setup to the movement it is all evil rituals. They are evil satanic rituals which they do underground. They do it above ground in the name of music and entertainment to brainwash millions upon millions of young men and women. You pay big money to go and watch Satan dancing on the stage. That's what entertainment of Hollywood is. Evil. Evil. Please break every record rip every poster you have of anyone of hollywood burn it to the ground no more satan is behind all this the eighth head The League of Nations was established in 1920. The League of Nations overall uh, handed over all its assets to the United Nations in 1946. In other words, the name changed from the League of Nations to the United Nations. That's what it is. Same principle, different color. So I'll hand it over to the United Nations. 
United Nations officially began on the 24th of October 1945. Ah, Great Britain, Great Britain fell at the end of World War II. At the end of World War II. So the head was wounded. What began? United Nations officially began on the 24th of October 1945. Few months after World War II ended on the 2nd of September 1945. The head was wounded, but it got healed on the 24th of October. Few months later. Are you with me? So the head was wounded on the 2nd of September 1945. It got healed on the 24th of October by establishing officially the UN, which was the Leagues of, uh, Leagues of Nations, and it became United Nations. Who created the, the United Nations? The RIIA and the CFR, who were established by the Round Table, who was the Chatham House, who was the House of Ind India House, who was... Uh, India Company, East India Company. All of this Great Britain established and pushed it to United States. Now the RIIA is based in London. Guess what? The CFR, uh, Council for Foreign Relations, is based in America. The CFR in America and the RIIA in Britain, both of them influence government levels and banking systems and you go back to the round table who, who was the founder of it C C C Cecil Rhodes who was one of the members of their of oh, Rothschild United States. What is the UN? UN is based on one thing and one thing only, human rights. UN is simply where nations came to unite against God. That's what the UN is. The UN of our time is the Tower of Babel of olden times. It is the exact replica, photocopy. Nothing is new. The tower of the United Nations in New York, Manhattan, is the Tower of Babel in Mesopotamia, Iraq. Well, the United Nations of today is the Tower of Babylon of, of the olden times. Now let's look. Let's look, my darling. Revelation 17, 3 to 5. Look at this. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names and of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. It's exactly the same one in Revelation 13. It is the same one in Revelation 17. But you see, Revelation 17 elaborates more about Revelation 13 about the beast, elaborates more about it. Look at it. Who was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations, and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written. What was the name? Mystery, Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. That woman, which her name is Mystery Babylon, is the United Nations in America. That is the Tower of Babylon, which John the Beloved saw in a prophetic, symbolic way. Why? The mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth because the United Nations, their, their objective is one thing, to make people godless. Godless. Now this is the abomination of all abominations. To make people godless. United Nations, as we said, it's based on human rights. 
Nobody talks about God's rights. Have you, has, have you had anyone go and saying, God, what about God's rights? They'll stone you to death. What is human rights? Value. What is God's rights? Purpose. If we do not know what is our purpose as human beings on earth and focus only on our value as humans, we will abuse ourselves. It is exactly what is happening in our time and age. The United Nations, the Western world, which is established by US and Great Britain, the, 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 the two horns of that lamb, which is the false prophet, their job is to make people walk away from God. So focus on what? Focus on you. You are God. It's human rights. Listen, 16 year old, mom and dad can't tell you anything. You choose what you want to be. You choose what you want to say. You choose what you want to do. You are your own God. There is no God. You're God. It's human rights. So you want to go out naked in the streets? You're free. You're a girl, want to be a boy? You're free. You're a boy, want to be a girl? You're free. In between, you're free. And the rainbow flag is everywhere now. All of a sudden, UN is behind all this evil. How do they manage to get all countries to speak the same language? Money. Banking system. They took over every Federal Reserve Bank. They can tell Australia, get up, sit down, shut up, don't talk. So the government is nothing but a puppet. There is no gov what government. The prime minister of this country is one of them. Amazing. Look what they're doing. They have destroyed humanity by giving you and feeding you lies. You're free, my daughter. Parents can't stop you. Anyone says anything, call triple zero, we'll throw them in the, in, the, in the box. You call police, they will come. They will not question your parents. They'll take them and grab them and chuck them in that box. And they will be facing a prosecution in, in the court. So-called justice, which is another lie, another lie. My son, my daughter, please, I beg you, I beg you. No one loves you after God more than your parents. No one loves you after God more than your parents. No matter what, no matter what, parents are not perfect. Nobody says they are but they will love you till the last drop of their life but the problem of the western world they destroyed family value because their focus is on individualism not family there is there has been not one show on any social media platforms that came and spoke about family morals family values family bond no one talks about family bond all of them they say you are free do as you please because that's what they want to do is to destroy you and make you godless you become your own god to end up in the bosom of satan human rights is value instead of saying Human rights, human rights, human rights. Once in our life, we need to come back to the truth and say, what is the right to be a human, not human rights? The right to be a human is the question we need to ask and answer. What is the right to be a human? That is the purpose. If you can know the answer to what is the right to be a human, you found your purpose on earth. When you find the purpose, automatically you will be able to give it value, human rights. What is the right to be a human? To worship God, to fear the Lord, to be His son, not to be a liar, not to be a killer, 
not to be a pedophilia. You cowards. Church leaders and government leaders. Cowards. Pedophilia. This is the West. Human rights. When you don't know your purpose as a human, you've destroyed yourself. You've ruined yourself. Human rights, you're free to do whatever you want. The daughter, the, 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 the son, they start going out against their parents' wish. So-called friends, I'm free, you can't stop me, I'll do whatever I want. I'll go out whenever, however, with whomever. After a little while, what happens to that child? They have destroyed their life, their future. Addictions. And the girl became pregnant and went and done abortion. Yeah? You know that. And the boy has, got, has become a drug addict, a drug dealer, and then he's in a gang. Either he ends up in prison or being shot dead in a, in a street of Sydney somewhere. Isn't it? That's what happens when you chase your freedom. Because you're chasing your value. You need to know your purpose. And if you don't find your purpose, you will destroy yourself. But this is the Western world. Drives in you value. You're free, you're free, you're free. And in the name of freedom, they enslave everyone. We have the slides back again. Did you know there is a statue in front of the UN in America? Did you know what it looks like? That's the eighth head, United Nations. Now I'm going to take it further. Look at that. That is around... Um, Tower of Babylon and look at this it's a round place where they gather and they have their assemblies it's round and look at the top looks like a sky you see and there is that golden sort of wall whatever it goes all the way to the sky because the Tower of Babel's head got to the heavens and where God is in heaven so they're saying we are assembling here against God we're challenging him we're challenging him this is the dragon in front of the UN. This is exactly the beast of Revelation 13. And Daniel 7. Out of all statues, out of all sculptures, why this? If you look at it carefully, the tail is a snake, the feet are a bear. The dragon is the snake, Revelation 12. The bear, the feet, when, where we read in Daniel 7, he saw the four beasts. This is the symbol of UN. The beast of Revelation 13 and Daniel chapter 7. That's what they have in front of the United Nations building. It's amazing, isn't it? 